absolutely love hitting it hard. I love getting after it. I love taking a tool, putting it into a good tool holder, putting it up in that spindle, pressing that green button, seeing it come down and just blast right through material. Absolutely love it. I'm not here, like I'm not that guy that wants to be mediocre. I'm not that person that wants to run the same part over and over at a mediocre time stamp. I want to see material get murdered. I want to see material left in chips. I want to blow people's minds and I want to ship incredible parts that are two spec, that are absolutely, each piece is just a work of art. And I want to ship those to the customers so they open that box and they are wowed every single time. You know, I love this trade. I love you guys. I love everyone. And, and sometimes I look at a few of the comments. There used to be more before, but we continue to prove our case. And we continue to have shop owners and machinists discuss in the comments how their shops have risen and how they make more money because they have learned from our videos and our academy. You know, machining is vast. It is huge. And that is another reason that I love it. Because you can go into many different trades and there's not much room. And when you're great, you're great. But in this trade, it's hard to become great. You're gonna be a student. If you understand this trade, you're gonna be a student forever because you'll never know everything. But those that understand that and those that understand the variables, the machine tool, the spindle connection, the tool itself, the work holding, the, the coolant, the pressure of the coolant, the hardness of the material, the type of material, and all the variables that come up, those that can dissect everything can see it all and perfect each one based on each specific application, those people will rise. A lot of people look at me and they say, Titan, like, how did you actually learn business? How did you learn how to build companies and do it? And I'm like, I learned it on the job. How did you have a head for it? And I say, I'm a CNC programmer. I take something complex, I dissect it, I don't freak out, I look at all of it, and I perfect the entire process. So when you look at a part, you have the part, you have the cavities, you have grooves, you have threads, you have different diameters, you have bosses, you have all of these different things at play. And a lot of people will look at it and say, that's Swiss cheese. But I've always been able to come to it and just dissect it, prioritize it, and work the process, work the problem to completion to deliver perfect parts. And it's the same thing in business. I have my employees, I have the building, I have customers, I have partners, I have vendors. I prioritize it based on importance and I work the process giving each the perfect amount of time for success. Now, in manufacturing, we have so many different variables. In CNC machining, we have even more variables in this tight space. When you look at a machine, what type of tool holder are you looking at? Just in my shop, just in the mill department, we have BT30s, we have Cat 40s, we have Cat 50s, dual contact, we have HSK 63, we have HSK 100. That's just in my mill department, and some companies have way more than that. Each spindle connection has its strengths. Each machine has its horsepower. Each machine has its torque. A lot of people look at torque and horsepower, and they think it's the same thing, but it's simply not. There is a relationship there where torque will rule all, and then you will transfer over to horsepower or vice versa. And you have to understand the mechanics of that. People look at us running tools and they don't think about the Synergy 735 and the coolant that we actually use. They don't think about the work holding and, and the clamping force that we're using to actually get after it. They look at a tool holder thinking all tool holders are created equal, but they don't understand that we're actually using a hydroforce holder to lock that tool in place. And if we truly know that we're gonna get after it, we use a sleeve 
that locks in a certain way and locks the tool in. And that mechanical process is called safe lock. And it ensures that your tool will not pull out of that holder. And it gives you more confidence. We look at the tool paths. We look at how long the tools are hanging out. We look at the rigidity of all of it. And then we have an obsession for perfection in our tool path to look at every single path to cut out all air moves, to keep engaged in cut as long as possible so that you have maximum MRR. Now, when you look at MRR, we're talking about material removal rate. And that is what matters when it comes to roughing out all of the material before you finish. How much material can you remove in how many minutes, period. And then that MRR will reflect the type of price that you give to your customer. So if you run fast and you run hard and you run consistent and you make incredible parts, your part prices will be lower, your customers will be happy, and through consistency, you will have long-term amazing customers. Your company will get paid well, and therefore you as a machinist will deserve that money because of the problems that you're solving on that floor, which is enabling the company to make money. If you do it like you've always done it and MRR doesn't concern you, then either you have a government job or you have a job at a big company and, and nobody actually understands the process so you're not being held accountable or you're simply putting yourself in a position where you will never make the type of money that you could have if you actually cared about MRR. Now, when you look at finishing, when you look at all of it, there are different tools. There are more flutes on these different tools. Just because it's a finish pass doesn't mean you need to go slow. You just have to understand the material and understand the finishing process. And you got to make that jewelry. I always say you rough it hard. You come back and you kiss that baby right into spec. Boom. Another thing that I want to say is, you know, when you're a kid and you look at adults and you think adults have it all going on they know everything they're so mature but then you become an adult and you realize they're still all messed up when i was a young machinist and i looked at older machinists i thought you know what what they're doing is perfect and i have to strive for that but as i got older and wiser and i started experiencing things and testing tools and doing it myself i realized that i was much Faster. I was much more efficient. My tool paths and my quality was exceptional. And it didn't matter that I didn't have their experience. What mattered was my mental aptitude and my attitude and my willingness to take chances. That is what mattered. When I go to all these big shops, you would think they have so many machines that their machinists must be amazing. And yet a lot of them, they do it how they used to do it. A lot of them don't push the limits. A lot of them are comfortable in just doing the same thing they've always done year in and year out. And therefore, I'm letting you guys know there is crazy opportunity in this industry because if you're young or old, if you have the right attitude, the right aptitude, if you're aggressive, if you study the videos, you look online and you master the variables, you look at the different applications, you look at the work holding, you look at all of it and you perfect the process, you will deserve great money in this trade. You will be able to rise through the ranks. You'll be able to take care of your family. And guess what? This industry will not be boring. It will be exciting. And like me, you will enjoy coming home knowing that you're kicking ass at work and making it happen. And your employer is happy. Your family's happy. Everybody's happy. And you're working in the greatest trade in the history of the world. Boom. I love you guys. Love this trade. I'm out. Boom.